Okay, here's video number two. We're going to be talking about uh, the video that is full of errors. Now I'll leave it up to you to determine whether that is doxa or agnosis or the lack of episteme. In other words, an untruth that's either based in ignorance, based in personal conjecture, or a whole untruth because someone might be sponsored. Now is this conjecture on my part? Why sure it is. Let's go down the long list of errors again in part two of this. At 427 in this video, this person says, the DX lenses are designed to give you sharper results. That's incorrect. Pixel density gives you sharper results. Lens sharpness gives you sharper results. Okay? You don't have to be buying DX. At the end of the, I've got a long list of errors in this video. I mean long. At 429 he says, right at 429 I believe he says, he says that this FX lens on a DX camera is like a digital zoom. Well nothing could be further from the truth. Hell no, it's not a digital zoom. It's an optical FOV crop. Field of view. Okay? Lens, hearkening back to the prior video, has no idea what is underneath it. A DX sensor or an FX sensor. It projects a circle of light. Okay? Either that lens is designed to be project a circle of light big enough to cover a uh, FX sensor, or it's big enough, just enough, to cover the DX sensor. If you've got a DX sensor lens and an FX, it's going to crop it down to DX. The lens that information right here on the base, the contact feed to the body, will tell it whether it's an FX or DX lens, and it'll crop it proportionately. But you have another thing over here, which is pixel density. Let's take a look at a sensor. Let's split this sensor up. Let's say the left sensor is the D810 sensor. Pixel density, photo sites. Obviously, this isn't the scale. Big difference. Now, let's take a look at the D7100 over here. If the D7100 sensor were a full-frame sensor and keeping pixel density the same, over here, of course, we have the D810. Here we have the D7100. Okay. This is a 36 megapixel. This is a 24 megapixel. If the D7100 were scaled up with the same pixel density as the DA10, it would be a 54.1 megapixel camera. Now ask yourself why bird shooters that make their living, their bread and butter, put the food on the table for their children, are using $25,000 plus lenses. They're not using them on D4S's and D810's or D610's or D750's, they're using them on D7100's. Why? Because the pixel density is so high. The SNR, the signal to noise ratio, is excellent on the D7100. You can crop the piss out of it using a super expensive lens. Okay? They're not using it on the D810. Now this video admits that towards the end, so I have to give him credit for that, obviously so. But he says that uh, an FX lens and a DX camera is like a digital zoom. And here we go. Let's take a look at some more errors. Here he gives you a comparison. Now there is a relativistic change if you take a full frame lens and stick it on an APS-C, i.e. DX sensor camera, that the depth of field is going to change. But not the speed itself of the lens. The light density per square millimeter remains the same. This lens neither knows nor gives a crap. It doesn't matter how expensive it is, the G series, the D series, the 1970s, uh, AI or AIS lens doesn't know or give a crap whether there's an FX or DX sensor down there. It either covers the sensor or it doesn't cover it. And if it doesn't cover it, then you got a full frame camera with the DX lens and then your full frame camera is going to sample the DX portion of its FX sensor. Really very simple. But here he states that a full frame 2470 2.8 on an APS-C crop sensor gives you an equivalent 36 to 105, which is both true and not true. It's a relative equivalent. All you're changing is the field of view, okay? You're not zooming in on anything. There's no difference. This lens changes nothing as so far as what is projected down here. The only difference is that you have a different field of view. But he states that the lens turns into an f4.2. Uh, for depth of field, that's the case. But what is not the case is that the light density in lumens remains the same. In other words, it's not all of a sudden, not a fast 2.8 lens, 
Okay, because if this is a 2.8 lens and I change, go from FX sensor to DX, I magically change the camera down here from FX to DX. Do you think the light density is changing? Well, hell no, it's not. Hell no, it is not. The light doesn't know or give a crap what is underneath it. Okay, what has changed is depth of field, not the speed of the lens, which people equate as one and the same thing. That's not the case. Light density versus pixel density. Let's talk about some other things. At 1020 he says, let's look at some real world measurements. What real world measurements? There's no such thing as a perceptual megapixel. He makes so many references he calls it a, a P-MPix. Total nonsense. Now here's the, one of the worst ones in the video. He talks about the 400mm 2.8, an insanely expensive Well, not that insanely expensive. But he talks about it on the Nikon D810. Then he talks about it on the D610. Let's just forget about the D610. Then he talks about it on the D7100. Now he says in APS-C crop sensor mode that the perceptual megapixels according to DxO Mark, the most fraudulent BS site on the internet, that is perceptual megapixels is 15 versus 17. Well, that's really damn close. Okay, let's split the difference and say they're both 16. Let's, let's shave one point off of either one. There's absolutely no comparison of those two. The pixel density on the D7100 is so much higher than the D810, okay? Now, I dare you to take a 400 or 500 millimeter lens and go out and shoot a little birdie at a thousand yards and then crop it to the same thing as the D810 and tell me that there is a one and a half degree of separation between them. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. The D810 using a 400 millimeter in APS-C crop sensor mode is nothing close to what you get in a D7100. I mean, what do you think these professional birders are using these $20,000 lenses on $1,000 APS-C DX crop sensor cameras for pixel density? Yes. Well, he confesses that at the end, but this is contradictory. So he says this, which is totally untrue, but at the end of the video he says, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Now, nobody who's ever bought an FX lens recommendation from me for their DX camera is yet to complain. Nope. I mean, has anybody? No, 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 no. <sighs> DXO Mark is a bogus website. Now, at 12 minutes and 21 seconds, the, 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 there's actually, I, I've got a list of like 13 mistakes he makes in here that are just heinous. There's a total of like 20 or so. But, you know, you, want, you make six videos listing all the mistakes in this one video. At 12.21 he says this, Should you use a full frame lens on a crop body? He says, only for wildlife. Oh, well that's interesting. Costs are less on FX lenses. Nikon makes and has made a crap load more FX lenses than DX. There is a plethora of them out there. They're cheaper. They're better. They're projecting, even as he will admit, an FX lens is projecting a big honking bunch of light. Now I'm going to tell you something right now and you better listen, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a crappy $50 Vivitar lens or if it's a $10,000 Zeiss lens. Every damn lens, and I've handled more lenses than God for the past 25 years. I don't give a damn if you like me, you think I'm a fat tattooed freak, I don't care. Every lens, if it's a $50 lens or a $50,000 lens, does this. Okay, let's show you what it does. Every lens. You see this? Every lens does that. Center sharp. Light fall off towards the edge. Doesn't matter what's underneath it. So, if I've got this huge hon honk and hunk of light and I have light fall off here, which you can see right here, you can see the light fall off. Let me, let me uh, position, uh, let me actually open up the aperture on my lens which is so ingeniously mounted here. You see that light fall off? You see it? Yes. You got light fall off here. Now this, if, if this is my FX sensor here, oh god, where did my corner, where did my corner coma come from? Light fall off. More expensive lenses are better at eliminating this than the cheaper crappier lenses. Now, let's stick a DX sensor underneath that FX lens. Watch what happens. It's magical. 
It's a no-brainer. Oh my god! I've eliminated all this edge coma. That way you can buy a cheap, crappy, like the 24 to 120 lens, the older one, not the F4, which is the current one, although the current one's a crapper too. You can buy that older lens and stick it on your DX camera, and oh my god, look, the distortion is gone. Why? Because the DX sensor has buzzed, sawed right through all the crap that exists on the periphery, okay? That is why I bought a small house in Florida. You know why I bought a small house in Florida? The same reason that an FX lens works better on a DX camera. It's easier to take care of. There's less to maintain. There's less there. It's like taking a shotgun, okay, to a small critter. You know you're going to get it versus a large buffalo. You know it's probably not going to work. Maybe that's a bad analogy. The point being is it doesn't matter how expensive the lens is. Contrary to this, did you use a full frame lens on a crop body only for wild... What's so special about wildlife? Do you think your camera gives a damn what it shoots? Pixel density and lens sharpness don't have jack crap to do with whether you're shooting a naked woman by the pool or a fuzzy bunny rabbit at a thousand... What do you mean? Should you use full frame lenses on crop bodies? He's referring to pixel density because it's a lot higher on APS-C sensors. What do you mean you should only use it on wildlife? What do you think you care? Your camera doesn't give a damn what it shoots. Shoot naked women, Indians, it could shoot, you know, a meteor falling from the sky, fuzzy bunny rabbits, unicorns, leprechauns, big... It doesn't give a damn. Pixel density and lens sharpness, resolution. Here's the big R. Everybody's confusing. They're always, well, how sharp is the image? What's the IQ, the image quality? Well, what are we talking about? Pixel density? Are we talking about lens sharp? How about the combination of the two? Lens sharpness. PD, pixel density. Both of these relate to image quality. Oh. How many more errors are in this thing? It has nonsense. Costs are less than FX lenses. Image has less corner coma. Why does the image have less corner coma when you're using an FX lens on a DX camera? Because all the crap out here has been chopped off. Okay? Just like your butcher chops the fat off of your meat before he sells it to you. I don't want the fat on that hunk of meat. Could you chop the crap off of it? It's the same thing a DX sensor does to a crappy FX lens. But it doesn't matter how expensive the lens is, they all have light fall off. They're all concentrated in the middle, and they fall off towards the edge. You can see that in my image samples. Let's take a look. Okay. Now, here is... I'll let you download this. You see this fall off here? This is all perfect, even illumination. You see this fall off? Well, you think that's a cheap camera? Well, hell no. How expensive is that? Well, that's $5,000 you're looking at right there. You see that light fall off? Oh, my God, yeah. Well, let's look at the DX. Same lens than the DX. Oh my god, it's gone! Oh my god, you're making sense! There's something wrong with this tattooed idiot! He's starting to make sense! He's saying stuff that's logical! This image you're looking at here is the product of 5000 bucks. $3,000 D810 with a $1,900 24-70 to 2.8. Period. Oh my god, it's cropped out here! Ah! I'm going to talk about some other things in the next video, something more interesting, and we'll continue on with the nonsense of this video. Okay? Check in for part three.